Hey guys, BTC USD update. Okay, so this is where we're at and this is how the read changes as we move along. So as you can see, we had, with the upside HVF, you technically have two impulses, then you get your head, uh, then we sold off. Uh, and it looked like uh, it may be breaking down on the head and shoulders at this juncture. You can still have um, a head and shoulders, but the risk is greatly reduced, mainly because the distance since the head now has extended really long. It's a lot longer extension, although sometimes I've seen breakdowns than the left shoulder. So the right shoulder has extended immensely. But what you do have is a, a rising wedge here, which has probably got a sell off in it. So it's the head and shoulders is no longer, for my view, the high probability probability outcome <clears throat> so what does that mean if we have our sell off here i suspect now we're going into something more positive for btc which would be a uh, continuation pattern so what's happened is you've got what we thought could be and we, when we talk about head and shoulders we're not head and shoulders traders we're not reversal traders at all um all i'm saying is there's a higher potential risk it's kind of like you're having three chiquilas and driving home in the middle of the night. Um, I'm not saying you're having a car accident um, or you're going to end up locked up in jail, but there's a higher probability of outcome that something adverse may occur. If you get through that rocky period when you're under that level of risk, um, you go back into a much lower profile of risk. That's kind of where we are now with this extension here. So this, this probably went a long way to negating that sell-off. Um, but it could still possibly be a very extended right shoulder, but that is what becomes more low probability. They're less likely. So what I think now is that this is all one large first impulse, uh, and I would assess the higher probability is now we've got a relative high two. We'll have a down leg at some point here, possibly falling out of this uh, rising wedge. Um, down to a low two somewhere here and then we're going to have a continuation pattern with a third impulse and we'll probably get a nice HVF with quite a good amplitude because that's 8470 nota we fought failing just shy of the eight and a half in a key target zone and stop zone you can see all these legacy levels and as I've drawn um, for my premium guys that I showed a little bit earlier um, you are this whole structure was all forming in and around um, a funnel as well that had existed on the upside some while ago. So resistance, resistance, whenever you break a key level uh, of significance, this funnel zone, you do it with momentum. You ran into the next level, you broke it on the way back down again, you did it with momentum, then you came back, you had resistance, resistance, now you're grinding through it and you're getting just to the edge and you're holding it. So that's probably the scenario of what I see uh, coming next and um, that's what I've been sharing um, on the premium guy side. And a couple of things that have happened that's interesting to note. While BTC is just holding its own and kind of doing a bit of grinding and hanging around. We've been in the eight fours down to the seven nines, you know, it's in this range. The alts have actually been getting a bid. Remember the alts got more punished than BTC did. So on the downside, it's when we're in a bear market, it's worse to be in alts. On uh, currently what's interesting is that while Bitcoin is doing okay and even just moving along all right, the alts are doing better. So we had a ripple. We had a special internal trade that we called for the guys. Initially, we'd gone for a high three there and a low three there with that being a primer. You can find out what that means um, on a course and a program. In the end, it went a little higher and then had that steep sell off when they all sold off quite steeply. So that actually would have been the final H3 and L3. And that is now made target. So you can see we've had a target made. You can see the churning on our second interim here, um, which is quite interesting. In fact, it was a wind up of itself. So you should uh, always draw that as well. Uh, you can learn now, learn about how wind up patterns give you major gifts on a program as well. Um, but that gave an extra bit of amplitude, which has probably been made as well. So you'll check that out and it'll go in there and you've just made a confluence in and around this level here. So you've got a small boost to this target. So Ripple has made a target. So it points to a bit of what happens when a target's made. Well, it's a key level where things are likely to rest again. You've got another legacy funnel to the short side on Ripple coming up. You can see the three lines. This is what we call key levels of significance. Again, you can find out more why we draw these and what's their relevance you can see it over here we shorted from here on the downside and that was our stop and that's your midpoint you're coming up to this level once you've run this target so in this zone you're probably going to die and have a bit of a pullback now 
and you're going to have to form new structure to push through this key zone uh, for the ripple against the dollar. All these charts are against the dollar for now, um, not against BTC. Just because we're assessing, are we still are we still bulls? And at the moment, <clears throat> in the short medium time, yes, we're making upside pattern targets, but it's probably a point where it's about a uh, pullback. So now's not the time to FOMO in because you're probably going to have a little bit of a, a sell off. Yeah, so if Ripple is showing it's going to dip a bit down, um, I've got Ethereum somewhere here in the mix. That has just made targets. It was uh, complex. We were in this one long as well from here, but I didn't get the full ride. Why? Because it played tricks on us. It made it almost to target, then had a big, big pullback, and then formed another HVF that uh, wound up a second time and then did the job on the second time, not only making the original patterns target, but making the new patterns target. Also, this one has already begun a little bit of a sell-off, so it actually overperform but it took a huff and a puff and a second setup to do it so that kind of means um, you know you don't want to be over bullish that the first one never quite made it and then it required this extensive wind up and note how the funnel was support here and again here so you got this but we had those steep sell-offs as Bitcoin took a little bit of a um, had some of that impulse of down selling but this also points a bit of progress decay and a little bit of calming so now you know you probably pick up some of the, the big major alts a little bit earlier finally the one we've been watching for a long time um, went really low vol over here this is against Bitcoin we said when this breaks to the upside and my alerts all pinged this uh, brings Bitcoin cash back into the game it can be many a false alarm with Bitcoin uh, cash you know it's given you a pump there gave you a pump there but after this was exceedingly low volatility and I did a chart in um, premium saying the you know the big move is potentially coming in there let's see we'll just show it to you um, and highlighted it so you want to maybe look at Bitcoin cash becoming almost too undervalued um, it does everything Bitcoin does um, it's been around now for a while um, given since our original uh, situation when it uh, first launched so I think um, it might just be uh, worthy of a watch. Let's see if I can find that uh, chart there. S very, very low volatility begets future um, moves, impulsive moves, and it's looking value. Now that chart was against Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has been uh, relatively strong. See, we're warning of something coming here in the very very low volatility period and working on that being a potential low three what do you get you get the move up so it's looking cheap if we get bitcoin cash up against something else let's see if we've got it against the dollar uh da, 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 da. ethereum bitcoin cash dollar you can see it's it went low vol again there and it's at levels that it was previously well supported at you can see here that was a little bull flag when you first came off these exceeding um, lows. So it's it's interesting that it's starting to get a little bit of a bid. Not yet runaway market, but getting a little bit of a bid. So those, that's where we're looking. Um, if BTC holds its own, that could continue to be good. But my my guess now is that you're probably likely a little bit of a easing sell-off. There is one other alternative that does sometimes occur. Um, in fact, it splits into kind of an A and B alternative. Um, it could just melt up from here. In other words, the buying that keeps coming up here at such a steep grind line level rate could eventually just be so overwhelmingly huge. It just forces a melt up there. That's one possibility. I don't, that's my lower road probability one. The other one is you just get a pop out the top for a short bit and then it collapses down. So it has a final little exhaustive, just sticks its nose through the top on a little bit of impulsive jab. And everyone thinks that's it, it's a big one. And then in fact, it actually dies back down or it just rolls straight into the sell off. So uh, I think there's a little bit of an easing um, sell off due to come out here for BTC. Um, and that will, where you look at where all the other coins are just having made targets. And I'm looking at the big majors here, BCC stroke BCH, Ripple and Ethereum all just uh, having made technical targets using HVF method. This points to them all softening for a bit, which makes sense if Bitcoin is going to fall out of a falling wedge. So that's what gives me the high probability likelihood that we'll probably have, even if we have a little pop out the top, we will then um, relay, re, um, my, excuse me, <coughs> have a pull back down um, before basing out. It won't be, uh, on balance of probabilities, I don't expect this to be run now, but this is more now in continuation territory having threatened the reversal and probably basing out around here. So if you can get in uh, near the 8,000 level, you've done very, very well. Uh, and then you could wait for the scenario cost I illustrated 
on this particular draw. That's it for me. Um, I'm Francis. You can, if you go to getting started on the marking sniper.com, you can get on our next free webinar. Um, how to succeed in a bear market. That's going to be a first time ever run that one. Um, really, really awesome. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. And if you are serious and you understand the methodology and you recognize that there are seasons to all things like cryptos and that this is a balance of probability assessment on balance of prob. Uh, so it's not about a 100% guarantee. Um, you may find that we could be for you. It's not for everyone. Um, go register, uh, hit the get started button. Otherwise, keep an eye out for that BT see possibility um, for a move to the downside that means you could load up a little lower but the overlying optimism for now remains now having seen off that uh, head and shoulder remember though this is all at the 15 minute the half hour and the one hourly time frame guys um, on the four hourly time frame we still potentially in rally zone out of a uh, much larger bear market, four hour to daily rally zone out of uh, a tough um, bear market. And until we've run the 11,800 up top here, uh, we haven't reverted this. This can just be an RH2 and come back down. So we, we're doing something slightly counter trend here um, uh, for now until such time as it's proven that it's a new strong trend and it's not impulsive enough to have, d have done that with any great conviction yet. So not all the lights are green for the bull um, on all the time frames and that's when we are strongest. So bear that in mind and nothing I say is advice. Just own your own trades, whatever you decide to do. Thanks for watching. Um, share, subscribe and like. Speak to you all soon.